What's up guys and welcome to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover all things stocks and investing, and today we're going to take a look back at the incredible career of Michael Burry. Michael Burry made his name predicting the 2008 housing crash, where he made hundreds of millions of dollars for his investors. However, he had a very non-conventional Wall Street career, and even recently got involved in the GameStop saga. The topic of today's video was determined by our channel members, who get early access to our non-time sensitive videos and get to vote on the topics of those videos. Michael Burry was born in San Jose, California in the early 70s. He has Asperger's syndrome and only one real eye. He lost the other eye to cancer when he was only two years old. He went to college at the University of California at Los Angeles, where he studied economics and pre-med. A little known fact about him is that he is actually a medical doctor. After graduating from UCLA, he went to medical school at Vanderbilt University, where he earned an MD. He then went to Stanford for his residency in neurology, but never finished it. He didn't finish his residency because despite being in the privileged position of having a promising medical career ahead of him, he was more interested in his hobby of investing. So he left the residency program at Stanford to start his own hedge fund. Burry had already begun to make a name for himself in the amateur investing world while in medical school. In his free time, he was active on message boards discussing stocks, such as the site Silicon Investor. Due to his investing acumen, he was able to attract the attention of Wall Street heavyweights, including the value investor hedge fund manager Joel Greenblatt. His stock picks subscribe to the principles of value investing, and he has said that he bases his strategies around Benjamin Graham and David Dodd. He started his hedge fund called Scion Capital in the year 2000. In the beginning, his fund's capital was sourced from his own family members. However, it immediately started making huge returns by shorting the market, especially tech stocks. This was right around the time of the tech bubble, and tech stocks were about to suffer their infamous sell-off. This allowed Burry to make insane returns for a brand new hedge fund manager. He consistently beat the S&P in the first year by making a net return of 6.6%, and in the second year, at the height of the tech sell-off, by making 45% for investors. He continued bucking the trend downward of the broader market, making 13% in 2002, and when the market finally rebounded, he beat the market again, making 41% in 2003. By this point, Michael Burry had built up a significant amount of hype surrounding his investing skills. His fund had grown to $600 million of assets under management, and he was now turning new money away for fear of no longer being able to maintain his returns. In 2005, Burry started paying attention to the residential real estate market. At the time, real estate prices were reaching all-time highs fueled by low interest rates and easy access to mortgage loans. The conventional wisdom at the time was that with real estate prices only seeming to go up, mortgage lending was a safe investment. In an effort to get high returns, mortgage originators started originating more and more subprime loans. Subprime mortgages are given to homeowners with poor credit and typically are low income. These mortgages have higher interest rates and therefore were very attractive to institutional investors who wanted yield. Of particular interest to Burry were adjustable rate mortgages which often incorporated so-called teaser rates. A teaser rate is a low interest rate charged for the first two years of a loan. A loan officer would entice a prospective homeowner to take out a mortgage by showing how low the payments will be in the first two years. A subprime borrower would have enough income to make the mortgage payments for the first two years under the teaser rate. However, after the two years have passed, the teaser rate expires and the borrower is now on the hook for the full interest payment. When this happens, the monthly mortgage payments would rise dramatically, in some cases more than doubling. Many subprime borrowers were barely scraping by under the teaser rate, so when the mortgage payments doubled, their chances of defaulting on the mortgage shot through the roof. The loan officers who were approving these loans knew of the risk, but the incentive structure encouraged them to make these subprime loans anyway. When a mortgage originator makes a loan, they would typically package it into a mortgage-backed security, or MBS, which would then be sold to institutional investors. By the time the teaser rate expires, the mortgage will already have been sold, so the originator doesn't hold that risk. Michael Burry did some research and found that the institutional investors who bought the MBSs were severely underestimating the default risk of the subprime mortgages. As early as 2005, he predicted that once these teaser rates expire, the MBSs that held these mortgages would tank in value. In 2006, Burry went to Goldman Sachs and other investment banks and asked them to sell him a large position of credit default swaps on residential mortgages. Credit default swaps, or CDSs, are basically insurance contracts that protect against default risk. If a mortgage ends up defaulting, the seller of the CDS has to pay the buyer the value of the outstanding principal. CDSs are usually bought by owners of the MBSs to hedge their risk, but they can also be purchased by speculators such as Michael Burry who think that the value of the MBSs will go down. 
Michael Burry bought the CDSs in 2005 and in the first year actually lost 17% on the position as the housing market continued to boom. Burry had extremely high conviction on this trade and despite the initial losses doubled down on his short position. However, many of his investors were weary of the position and wanted to pull their money out of the fund after the recent poor performance. To prevent investor outflows, Burry put his CDS position into a side pocket fund separate from his main fund. Existing investors in Scion were forced to enter into the CDS fund and their money was locked up until Burry decided to wind it down. Many investors were furious as their money was locked into a poorly performing fund that they hoped to exit. In 2007, the housing bubble finally burst and default rates, especially on the risky adjustable rate mortgages, skyrocketed. These defaults caused Burry's CDSs to skyrocket in value, profiting his fund to the tune of $725 million. So how much of these things did you buy? I mean, you got out of everything else and bought credit default swaps betting against the, the, the housing market, right? Right. We bought basically short $8.4 billion of credit default swaps um, related to mortgages or financial companies. You must have been pretty and, confident that this thing was going to blow well, up. Well, we had a giant bet for us, and, and I was extremely extremely confident in the outcome. Were your investors as confident? Uh, I think a few investors were. <laughs> Some of them thought you were crazy. Some of them thought you probably thought you'd lost your mind. I think, I think I know for sure that some of them thought I lost my mind. So you made a ton of money? Made a ton of money. Much more than I ever imagined, you know, I'd ever have. Were your clients grateful? I think a lot of clients were just glad to be done with it at the end. You know, we, we, Even though I, they doubled their money? Well, we, we made $725 million, I think, on the funds in 2007. And in the first six months of 2008, there was about $730 million in withdrawals. Perhaps I had made the trade too big for the fund. And my, my confidence in the trade had uh, ticked off some people. Even though you made them rich? Even it's remarkable. There, there are investors who made tens of millions off this and uh, were per still pretty upset. Despite the profits, his investors were still upset about how he locked up their funds. After the financial crisis was over, most of Scion's investors finally withdrew their money and Burry closed down the fund to focus on his personal investment portfolio instead. In 2015, Michael Burry's story was memorialized in The Big Short, starring Christian Bale, Ryan Gosling, and Brad Pitt. Michael Burry has been active in the investing spotlight recently, having been a part of the GameStop short squeeze. His new hedge fund, called Scion Asset Management, just like all other hedge funds with more than $100 million of assets under management, has to disclose its positions each quarter in a 13F filing with the SEC. In the third quarter of last year, Michael Burry submitted his 13F, which showed that he held stocks like Google, Facebook, and Goldman Sachs. However, it also included 2.75 million shares of GameStop, worth $11.9 million at the time. By the next quarter, he had trimmed the GameStop position to just 1.7 million shares, but due to the appreciation of the stock over the course of the quarter, it was then worth $17 million. In the most recent quarter, ending December 31st, 2020, he had sold his entire stake in GameStop. GameStop investors who were involved in the short squeeze saw this with mixed reactions, some saying that the fact that Michael Burry was invested in GameStop in the first place is proof that GameStop has the potential to make a turnaround. Others said that the fact that Burry sold before the short squeeze happened shows that he thinks the company's fair value is much lower than what the price is right now. However, we won't know anything further about his thoughts on GameStop since the short squeeze, because unless he re-entered the stock, he likely does not have a position in it at this time. That wraps it up for this video. If you like this content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future videos. Also check out our second channel, WSM Research, and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.